In this video, we're going to talk about RV toilet paper. It's very important what you do and don't put down this device in your RV. And we're going to give you some expert advice. Stay tuned. For well over a year, we had been buying this exact toilet paper and it was working fine. And then one time to the store, we accidentally switched and bought this kind of toilet paper. And apparently going from soft and strong to ultra strong was a bit much. And we had some issues to deal with in our black tank. We've been using Happy Camper for a year and a half with good success. There are other options. You can see a picture from their website, what they claim it does. We believe it works and we believe that a good enzyme in the black tank helps keep it healthy. That along with a lot of water. All right, so here's the real world test I'm trying to set up and demonstrate the wrong toilet paper versus the right toilet paper for an RV. The difference in the RV system is that it is a, they call it a black tank for a reason. The toilet is gravity fed, meaning you push the pedal, the flap opens, everything in the content slides down about a two foot tube into the black tank. The black tank ideally has some enzymes and chemicals and such that help break down solids into liquid and I'll share what we use later in the video and uh, also share the company's website and what their product does for your black tank. But in this part, this demonstration is about toilet paper specifically and the effects of water on the toilet paper of your choosing. In this test on the left is toilet paper you would not want to use for reasons that will become apparent and then on the right is toilet paper we've been using successfully for over a year in our motorhome. So each of these little bowls of water represent the black tank with water in it. We're going to place toilet paper, uh, each kind of toilet paper, one in each bowl of water and let it soak for a while, do some amount of breaking down just by sitting in the water. After some time has passed, we will simulate the gravity fed water from the toilet bowl splashing into the black tank by pouring this cup into each of these so it can begin to break down the toilet paper that's been soaking in the water for a while. This is real world. This is how the toilet and black tank works. Water falls under the force of gravity into the tank and lands on the toilet paper. And then we'll add a little bit more agitation to simulate the tank flush, which is sort of like a lawn sprinkler inside the black tank to try to help keep it clean. I will use our sink sprayer, uh, not with a lot of pressure, with a low amount of pressure, and spray into each bowl to further try to break down the toilet paper and see what happens. In the end, you want the toilet paper to be mostly disintegrated, and that way it will not build up in your black tank. You will not have to take extreme measures to get it out of your black tank once a sufficient amount were to build up if you used the wrong toilet paper. So, well, so let's start. I'm going to start the stopwatch and then put each piece of toilet paper in the water at the same time and we'll let some time lapse and then come back and continue the test. These are the same lengths of toilet paper. I did measure them before starting this test so that they are not in any way um, different other than they are different type of paper and will be affected differently by water and soaking in water. So this current test, I don't have any amount of time in mind other than I want to show you the passage of time with the stopwatch back there. After some period of time, I will splash water from the measuring cup onto each and show you up close what happens when the simulated toilet water falls down onto the toilet paper inside the black tank. Soon after that, we will take each bowl to the sink to demonstrate a little bit of water pressure hitting it to see what that further does to the toilet paper. For now, we're just gonna let some time pass, then we will continue the test. Now it's time to add some gravity-fed water to each bowl of toilet paper. I'm just going to pour this from some distance, a foot or so above, hope for not too much splatter, and let the force of the water falling kind of do its damage to the, to the toilet paper. Well, 
what we want to see is that the toilet paper begins to break down and not stay in solid pieces. See lots of little bits here. Over time with more water and force, this just continues to break down. And once we hit it with the tank flush, which we'll also simulate, it'll break down further. Now we'll hit the not safe for RV toilet paper with the same water. We'll go all around on it. Try to get this force of water to break up the toilet paper as best we can. All right. Similar, similar pour of water here. I can see there are still much larger chunks of this one. This one is broken down more. So next we'll get some of this water out, leave the toilet paper untouched otherwise, and simulate the tank flush mechanism using the kitchen sink sprayer. Okay, I've gently poured all the water off this guy. I didn't touch the toilet paper other than to hold it back from pouring out. You can tell in just a glance here, this is still mostly intact. Very few little pieces have come off just after splashing water down on top of it. This guy is in a lot worse shape as far as breaking down. And now we'll add additional water pressure using the sink sprayer. We're gonna maintain correct toilet paper on the right, incorrect toilet paper on the left. We're not gonna use a lot of pressure on this. We just want, because I don't know how much pressure the tank rinse does exactly. This would be maximum. I don't want to do maximum. I don't want to do minimum. Somewhere in between, because we can hear it from the outside. We can hear the tank flush running, and we can hear it swishing around inside the tank. So I'm going to take one and just kind of swish it under the spraying water stream that you can see back here and let it do some more damage to this toilet paper if it's going to. All right, there's the RV toilet paper. We'll examine the results after we do the typical household toilet paper under the effect of the tank flush. All right, and there we're done. So now we've got the effects of water being gravity fed on top of it. And we've got the effects of the tank flush pressure simulated using the kitchen sink. I'm just gonna use this cheese grater to pull through here and see how many big chunks still exist. We'll see what it looks like. You can already see that good RV toilet paper is mostly little bits. Any bit of agitation more at this point, this has just been a few minutes. Imagine it sits in the tank for a week between flushes. Um, it just further continues to break down. So we see a few bigger pieces in here, but again, this is this is roughly five minutes of time in, in the process uh, versus this guy. There's, there's an entire, this is mostly still one solid piece. There's a few little bits, but it's mostly one solid piece. I'm gonna go back just for fairness here and try to fish more inside the RV toilet paper one. There's really not a solid piece in there. There's a few little bits, but over a little more time, a little more pressure, these continue to break down until there's really not anything solid left behind, just tiny little bits. So as I mentioned, what brought us to this video today was buying the wrong toilet paper and having two tank flush experiences that were less than ideal. We could look down through the toilet, even as the tank was flushing, the black tank was being flushed out and the tank rinse was running in there. We could hear it swishing around in there. We could see piles of toilet paper. You can uh, hold the pedal down on the toilet. It holds the flap open. You can look down there and see straight into the tank. Not very much, but you can see a, a spot down in there. And we could see huge piles of toilet paper that had just built up over the past week. This is also how you would see a poo mountain if you were to happen to uh, have an experience uh, with that in your life. But we had, we, had, we had run the tank rinse for a while, the tank flush for a while, and it, and it really wasn't helping. 
So I remembered seeing uh, my favorite YouTuber, Chad, at Changing Lanes, Chad and Tara, and I, I believe everything he says. I think he's really thorough and really smart and a lot of experience. And I remember him saying that they like to leave their black tank closed for a while while the tank flush runs and then let it go. And I just felt like that was unsafe. If you get distracted, which is easy to do, uh, that could maybe push, push junk up through the toilet into the RV. And so I never wanted to risk that. And we didn't have a problem where I felt like we needed to do that. But this, this toilet paper dilemma prompted me to realize, okay, I'm going to stay right here by it and I'm going to do that. So I, I kept the black tank closed, kept the tank flush running, and it added water. And what I would do then was after it ran for a few minutes and built some, some volume up, uh, when I opened the black tank then, you're getting some pressure. And so that pressure of all the water and the volume actually moved more material out than otherwise we were seeing and i would run over to the uh in the dump hose where it plugs into the sewer dump spot there we have a clear elbow and it's really handy at times like this to run over and see what's passing through the clear elbow so i would run over and i could see large clumps of toilet paper passing through after i had closed the tank and let the water run for a minute so that pressure was helping so i did that four or five times and eventually the last couple of times or so it was just water. So that, that seemed to indicate that those flushes, those heavier flushes, so to speak, were clearing the toilet paper and, and doing the trick. There's also a reality that there is toilet paper out there that'll disintegrate to nothing. Uh, and I think it's really a cost versus functionality analysis here. I think you're gonna pay a lot more for RV toilet paper that literally just becomes, you know, smoke in the water. Um, what we have is breaking down to little tiny bits of nothing and, and even more with uh, additional time and agitation. So this is working for us. It's Walmart great value, which is a great value in terms of cost and it's functioning well for us. But uh, if, if you need it to break down further, there will be toilet papers that I don't have experience with that um, I've heard people say just turns into like cotton candy and water, right? Literally nothing. It's also worth pointing out that some people don't put toilet paper down their toilet they bag it and you know to each their own i'm not going to judge that because a lot of people do it people we know and like and respect do that we've heard people say they do that they bag it uh, i would never want to bag toilet paper that's used personally uh, and there's people that don't even use their their, their toilet in their rv full-timers that always go to the bathhouse at the campground again to each their own i like the convenience of having ours I truly believe that with uh, you know sufficient water use, the good enzymes and bacteria treatment, and good tank flush and good uh, practice and procedure, that you can use your you can use your RV bathroom and toilet without having without having any issues. We've been almost a year and a half, and until this bad toilet paper purchase, everything was fine. And I wanted to keep this video entirely RV toilet paper, but since we're talking about the toilet, I want to mention that there is a seal in the bottom of the toilet, a little rubber seal. And over time that can get dry or whatever happens to it. I've heard a lot of people say they replace it or they replace the toilet over that. Um, again, Chad at Changing Lanes has kind of been my source for all, uh, all things learning about full-time and RVs. Uh, he recommended and we use plumber's grease. As soon as that thing is not holding water, you'll, you know, the toilet will be dry and it could be weeks or it could be months in between. Just get some plumber's grease, put on some silicone gloves, treat that, clean the seal and treat it. We actually have a YouTube short that you can find easily. And I walked through that exact thing in, in one minute flat. And so uh, be aware that you can keep your toilet happy with, uh, you know, a $2 tube of uh, plumber's grease and a couple minutes of effort every few weeks or every few months as needed. As always, if this video is useful at all, entertaining in any way, please like and subscribe. That helps us with the analytics at YouTube, helps our YouTube channel. We appreciate that so much. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching, again, you're among the elite that watches to the end. Appreciate you. Thanks again.